What's your I'm not even supposed to be here today story. When I was in middle school, my mom went to work before I woke up so I always got myself to school alone. On this particular rainy, windy day, I decided to accidentally sleep in until 11am. I lived in northern Colorado where there are hardly any tornadoes, but when I turned on the TV there was a serious tornado warning for my exact area. We lived in a tiny apartment on the third floor, and all the neighbors were kinda sketchy, so I was alone and panicking, just wishing I had gone to school. By then the weather was too severe to walk the mile to my school, so I hid in the bathroom and accepted my fate and eventually the weather cleared up. Instant karma for not going to school. TBH I've done that a few times too. I used to be so tired from waking up at 6am and not be able to go to bed before 1am that some days I'd just be like waking up is not even an option 8am and sleep through. Never got punished by a tornado though. <laughs> Missed my flight off Kauai and got on the next flight to Oahu. Flight was 20 minutes. Takeoff was fine and we were ascending normally, until the plane jolted with such severity. As I rose out of my seat I saw a flight attendant hit their head on the ceiling. People started screaming. The plane was tossed up and down and whipped side to side. I grabbed the arms to my chair like it was a jetpack and held on for my life. This continued for minutes. All I could think was, this is how I die. I'm not even supposed to be on this flight. What a terrible way to end this vacation. Eventually it stopped and the pilot came on over the intercom and apologized for the turbulence and told us the drink service would be suspended. Don't care about the juice at this point. Buddy, get this plane on the freaking ground. A word. That's the moment when you have to accept fate is out of your hands. If I could choose a death I'd probably say plane crash. Not that I want others to die, but if I'm going down, let's ride it. Working in a thrift store, covering another manager's shift so she could take her birthday off. But right after I clock in, I see a woman stuffing her purse with used bras and panties and then try to make a run for the door. I get as far as saying, excuse me, mom before she screams and upends her XL Taco Bell cup full of Mountain Dew live wire over my head. She runs into the street and everyone in the store stares at me while I'm dripping in orange bowls. Got to work the next 8 hours with sticky, citrus scented hair. I think the more surprising part is that this thrift store sales used underwear and bras. Worked in fast food. Anyways this one night it was crazy busy and some people had called in. Here I am wanting to check my schedule but noticed the massive lines. The one super chill manager looks at me and motions for my to come to the back and she tells me that if any of the other managers catches me I'm stuck there all night. Friday night I just wanted to go out and drink. So she literally grabs me by the collar and drags me out the back door and closes it behind me. Best boss ever. Not me but as I'm getting dressed for work a co-worker messages me to ask if we can switch stations. I was station A he was station B. In my mind the stations were about the same but people usually prefer station A. I say that's fine and go to station B. I proceed to get zero calls. He was busy the entire shift including a guy that went into cardiac arrest while driving and hit another car and a tree and the initial dispatch reported the passenger as being unconscious as well. I heard all the on the radio. He texted me later in the night like I'm never swapping with you again. TL. DR. Coworker tried to swap for the better station and got screwed. Supposed to be on our honeymoon, but didn't have enough money to go anywhere so we are hiding from family for the week. Being kinda nice. Congratulations. Came in on my day off because someone called out. Got rewarded with a hands down worst bite in my 5 plus years as a groomer. 4 deep punctures. 2 ended up accessing. And I got a bone infection despite immediate treatment and antibiotics. The constant bandage changes ended up ripping bits of my skin off so I have scars not just from the bite, but also the bandaging. But all you do is play with puppies all day. Number. Source. Also a groomer. Reluctantly was taking a trip to Hartford. CT one weekend and on the way caught a flat tire. Friend drives a Lexus which requires a custom key to remove the tire. Did not have the key and had to be towed to an auto shop to have the wheel busted off. Whole process takes about 2.5 hours and we're hungry and cranky so we decide to stop off at a random bar we saw on Yelp and we head straight there. Walk in and the owner is crazy excited. Like running around the bar excited to see us. 
insists we sit at the bar with him and he tells us we're his first lunch customers ever, serves us super great food, stay for a while for some drinks with him and have a good time. Later a few girls walk in and he's only slightly less excited to see them. This dude had crazy energy. Have a good time for the rest of the night there and end up dating one of the girls we met that night for 3 or 4 months. Really an enjoyable time. Sounds like the best outcome you could have of Hartford. I'm also from CT. I have briefly mentioned this on here before, but I was almost sold into a sex ring as an infant. I was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where my biological parents basically listed me on the black market, intending to sell me for profit. Much to my fortune, a group that posed as buyers on the black market but was actually an adoption agency, or at least worked closely with one, arranged to buy me, then proceeded to literally steal me in a van and spirit me away to Rio. There, I was kept safe, and at 9 months of age, a wonderful young couple from Pennsylvania flew down to meet me and take me home forever. I'm now living a fantastic life that was gifted to me against unimaginable odds, and I'm thankful for it every day, and I'm thankful to those who made it possible, whoever they may be. They must have had hearts of gold and boundless courage to enter dangerous situations like that to help the helpless and innocent children like myself. Play the lottery, kid. You're frickin' lucky, and keep on keeping on. Co-worker's granddad died. I was supposed to be on holiday but ended up covering her shift. Got there and was informed I needed to fire someone. Well not exactly, they weren't on high enough warnings yet. I had to convince her to quit. Note, I had properly fired her boyfriend two months prior for an unrelated reason. After that's done, an ex-staff member sent me a crap load of pissy messages that they hadn't gotten a leaving card gift. I explained her, they had given away their last shifts meaning we didn't have time to organize anything. And B, it has never been one of my jobs to organize leaving cards gift. There were two other people assigned to the job. Finally C, I had bought another co-worker a leaving gift with my own money, on my own time, nothing to do with work. Also, a kid chundered, everywhere, 11 hour shift, in my holiday time, never again. Not my story but a classmate's, her friend got a baby duck, so she went to go see it, her friend lived with drug dealers, cops raided the place, she was arrested along with the 12 guys that were in the house. They all would have been charged with felonies if the two drug dealers hadn't written their names on the bags of drugs. Best part of this story is that the raid happened on 4 stroke 20. I love college towns. She was still charged with a misdemeanor for possession. Georgia State Penn was hospitalized over my court date. Social workers took care of it supposedly, got back to work, Air Force, and had a bench warrant out for me, told me to show up at Georgia State Pen at 5am, thinking I was getting a new court date, nope, got a roommate in cell block D, didn't get to talk to a lawyer till the next day, after a brief conversation I was released by the warden, and that's how I learned not to drive like an butthole, but at least I can say I've been to prison, not on my record. Got fired while on paid vacation leave to spend the weekend celebrating my 21st birthday. I get home from the bar around 3am. Wake up at 4am because my phone is ringing. Conversation goes like this. Um hello drunky it's boss. We need you to come in at 6 to help open. No one else will do it boss I like just got home from the bar. I'm still drunk. Just until 9. I just need you until 9. I'm drunk. It's my birthday weekend. I asked off months ago but no one else will come and I'm drunk and on vacation. Please drunky. Please. Oh my god for frick's sake. Just till 9 just until 9 fine. I'll get up and take a shower and call a cab. Thank you. See you at 6 inches. I open the bakery department and as an added surprise the coffee bar, which I was not trained to do, and work both departments alone for 2 hours serving customers, 9 rolls around, boss calls me into the back office as I'm clocking out and fires me on the spot for being at work smelling like vodka and asks me to clean out my locker, looking back, I was supposed to get my annual raise 4 days later and she knew I'd be drunk. She set me up to work 3 hours so she didn't have to give me a raise. Honestly frick that place and that boss. Sounds like the crap my old job would try to play. Hopefully you've got something much better. Was working retail. Had 2 weeks left till school started again and I was quitting. 
This lady let her kid crap on the floor in a clothing rack. My manager approached me and told me the situation and said I was to clean it up. I responded with, I have 4 days left here. I will quit right now. You don't pay me enough for that. She laughed and said she figured I'd say something like that. Then we both laughed. Then she said she'd find somebody who actually needed the job to do it. I worked retail and had this happen as well. Somebody crap on the electric baseboard heater in the bathroom. Instead of having his just above minimum wage workers clean it up, my manager gloved up and cleaned it up himself. I can't imagine asking somebody to do something so disgusting and out of the scope of their duties. I'm a teacher. I was sick and thought I could make it through a school day. But I was miserable. I went to the office to arrange a sub. On the way back to my room to get my car keys, I saw two students loitering outside the library. I tried to keep my head down and my ears closed but as I walked by one said to the other, Man I'm going to freaking murder that kid with this pencil when I see him. He could have said just about anything else and I'd have kept walking. Alas. Stopped by a friend's house. Turns out that was the day the police decided to come and arrest him search his house. I was on my way out the door when they arrived. I was in the coast guard and I had to cover for someone on my day off. Well, the night before was my friend's last day in, so we threw down and partied. Normally when you stand by for someone, it's common courtesy from the other crew to basically give you the day off, unless you're really needed. So, I said frick it, well, I'm hung over on the wreck deck trying not to die, and a pipe goes through that a body had been reported and they called the crew to make preps and put me on there. Suckers. Turned out to be 4 bloated bodies that had been gotten to by sharks and other fish. Worst smell I've ever smelled got back to station and had to throw away the uniform I was wearing. That crap sucked. But, not as much as sism afterwards. EWW. What's sism? Last summer there was this rugby tournament in my hometown. Since I play rugby while at college and my team is participating, I decide to go visit and watch the games. I originally had been unavailable which is why I wasn't signed up. Anyways, it's a 7s tournament but they have an injured player after the first game and are down to 6 for the next one. So in order to keep playing they need another player. They see me on the sidelines and ask me to pay. Now remember that my intention was to come and watch some rugby? Well too bad. Now I'm borrowing someone's cleats and mouth gourd to go play rugby in jeans. Jeans. Despite that though we still played really well. Taking one for the team. I got called into work one day back when I was working customer service. The girl that had been working that day was in a car crash on the way into work. So I wasn't upset about coming in just worried for her. Anyway, not 5 minutes after I arrived and clocked in, a lady who looked homeless and absolutely reeked of body odor came in. I worked at a members only wholesale store. So you had to pay a $45 flat fee before you could purchase a single item from the store. This lady came in, wandered around for a minute or two, and then made her way to my counter. Thus started the most bizarre exchange I think I've ever had at a retail store. Her. Do you sell animals? Me. Um. No. This is a wholesale store. Her. Yeah you'll don't sell chickens. What about just chicks? Me. Nope. Neither of those. We do sell eggs but they're unfertilized. Her. Hum. Well do you sell cabbage and hot dogs? Me. You bet do you have a membership? I'll be glad to set you up and get you ready to shop. Her. Oh no. I couldn't possibly. I gotta save my bucks for chickens and hot dogs. Can't have one without the other. Or the cabbage. I'll try Walmart I guess. You think they have chickens there? They probably do. I'll go there and. She ambled away while still talking clearly no longer talking to me, and left the store. I'll never forget that crazy lady and the way she had lipstick smeared all around her mouth. Also, the girl who got in a wreck was fine but received a broken arm and a new car from the other driver's insurance for the trouble. I had one very recently. I was in work, doing very little, like, full screen games little, and my boss walked up to us. He asked if I could go cover the IT help desk as someone had gone homesick. It's not my job, I'm a server admin, but I'm still in internal IT, and I couldn't really say no because I was playing games at work. Oh god the amount of grief I got from people. My whole day was spent saying I don't know how to do that, 
I'm not even supposed to be here today. Most people were fine. A few thought I was new, but there were some real assholes. I don't know how those help desk guys do it. It's hard work, and you meet some real idiots. Even thought it's a huge IT company colon. Having done tech support at the user level, yet, yeah, they expect everything of you, and that you should know everything that they do and how to solve it. Was working night security at a hotel at the time. My co-worker and relief got bit by a spider and had necrosis so I was called in while he was rushed to the air. An hour into my shift the entire half of the town lost power including the hotel. It was the middle of summer in 100 degree plus weather. And at night it reached upper 80 degrees if you were lucky. The hotel was 100% full and the parking lot was pitch black. During this time some dudes on bikes decide to come round and try to break into some cars. I had to chase them off. One of them got brave and tried to fight me and I had to tase him. His friends carried him off. I walked circles around the hotel for 5 hours before power came back. I wasn't even supposed to be there that week. At least now you have a cool story. This is long but bear with me. I offered to cover on a day I didn't normally work so my co-worker could spend some time with her family across the state. It was also the day we were training a new girl. I walk in and the one other co-worker there starts filling me in on the day before. Apparently the new hire was all over the map and kept going to the bathroom for 20-30 minutes at a time. Multiple times over a 6 hour shift. It was a doctor's office and we open for the day. Half day so opening at 1. And she's not here. Not exactly the best impression when you're still training. Half an hour goes by and she says she's walking there and starts rambling. She lives literally a block and a half from the office so I don't know what she's talking about. My co-worker pulled her aside and said she can't keep taking super long breaks unless she has medical problems or stomach issues. She gets it, completely understands and apologizes. Then she takes off her blazer and reveals the worst outfit I've ever seen for work. It was a romper that somehow showed off her butt and her chest at the same time while also looking dirty like she found it on the floor. She's talking like crazy and won't be quiet or focus on anything. Highlights during the few hours she was there. Comma stroked a patient's butt cheek and thigh because she wanted to see if her leggings felt as soft as they looked. Comma flirted with a man that was 70 and married and when he didn't respond physically grabbed him and tried to force herself on him. Comma said she needed to get something from her boyfriend real quick. Parked an hour back lot for 30 minutes where no one could see her. When she came back from her parking lot escapades her entire personality was mellow and dropping until she just stopped functioning. She stared catatonically at the computer screen for 40 minutes while we discussed what to do about it. Ended up making up an excuse and having the doctors tell her to leave. As she left she went to go say goodbye to one of the docs and was slurring her words and for some reason. At 5.30 in the evening told him bye have good mornings and then left. She then called me multiple times at the office sobbing because she was fired. It was uncomfortable. And I wasn't even supposed to be the one working that day. TLDR. Filled in and ended up training a girl who was high out of her mind. Did not have good mornings after that. Definitely H. I used to make custom leather accessories for motorcycles and once worked on a Saturday to catch up on special orders. A couple came in for a tank bra for the wife's bike. Turns out I knew the husband for years and the new wife was the CPA for a development company looking for an assistant. And that's how I'm not even supposed to be here today turned into a much better paying job about 10 minutes away from home with excellent benefits. I was visiting a federal prison for a community event. And after it was over, there was time to visit with the inmates. Well, me and a friend were about to leave to go get lunch, but since my co-worker was there I thought to invite her. She was all the way in the back of the room, but before we could make ourselves back to the door, there was a lockdown. We were stuck there, hungry and without any news, for over two hours. After we got out, I heard in the news that an inmate had escaped. TL. DR. I was in a lockdown in a federal prison because I thought to invite my co-worker to lunch. Worked at McDonald's in high school. Manager called me and asked me to work a breakfast shift on Saturday morning. I figured sure, the manager was pretty cool and I would be out of there in a few hours. They have me taking orders and money at the back drive through window. Car pulled up and it was this old lady. We had the strangest conversation I've had at that place. It goes. Me. Welcome to blah blah blah. I'm sure we all know how it goes. 
Her. Hello. Did you know you're a virgin? Me. Not a virgin but have to be nice so. I am. Her. Yes. I'm a virgin. You're virgin. We're all virgins. Me. Getting curious now. Oh. How do you know all this? Her. The people told me. They are all around us and they know that we're virgins. Me. Oh. Well it's good that you told me. Her. They had a beating and we are going to the place for the virgins. Me. That's great but you got a order now. Her. Oh. I'll have a tea. She then pulled forward and proceeded to have the exact same conversation with me again at the window. Asked for the manager and told her about her new virgin vacation spot as well. It was this old lady and all the makeup she had on was hot pink. WTF Mayo. What a character. Wonder what she was up to. I was cast in a play, quit, and then blackmailed into coming back and doing the show by the crazy choreographer. Found out years later the director had no clue, and he apologized to me. The night I came in for my first, forced, rehearsal, I saw a drunk guy get hit and killed by a car outside the rehearsal space. Got in a small traffic accident so the police sent me to the nearest hospital, which is within an air force complex. Beside me was a sick soldier. We were in the same room separated only by a curtain. Everything was fine until suddenly an officer came in asking what's the man's illness, then proceeded to hit the man multiple times while shouting how much of a pee the man is. After all the beating, he peered into my side of the room and leave while the man cried telling the nurse that he's not pretending and are actually sick. Thank god I got picked up by my parents a moment after. Okay army or not that's definitely illegal and I hope to hack that guy sued. When I was a senior in high school I took a sick day, because I wanted to, not because I was sick. A woman walked into my house, pooped on my dining room table, wiped it on our walls, and then left, not joking. I didn't want my parents to know I had not gone to school, or hadn't left the doors unlocked. So I spent 2 hours scrubbing and disposing of the evidence, and then showering and scalding hot water for an hour. I live in the United States but used to do work for businesses in Europe and Canada. I was behind on a lot and went into the office on the 4th of July to catch up. It's a major holiday here so no one else was around in the whole office park. For some reason, I never found out why, the fire alarms all went off. Since it was an office building the fire department was notified and showed up saying they needed to do a full sweep of the building. On their way out, the fireman told me that the key to the building wasn't available where it should be so if I hadn't been there to let them in they would have had to smash windows to get in. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.